Okay, so good evening once more and thank you for joining the NIVAP webinar for June. And we have our very own Professor Utterson, the coordinator of NIVAP, and a very interesting bird watcher and a nature lover to give us um, a talk about the swallows and sea of Nigeria. Indeed, many of us get confused at times in the field to differentiate between the swallows and the sweet. And so I'm um, assuring us that today we are going to, to have a take home that when we are out there, we'll be able to, to say confidently, this is a sweet and that is a swallow. So without much wasting of time, I want to give the floor to Professor O. You're welcome. You have the floor. Thank you. And welcome everyone from Sweden. Uh, we have a sunny day today and uh, 18 degrees. That is 25 degrees inside. So but that is more likely. Uh, I start with sharing my screen. I share this one. I think, yeah. And I see everyone there. So swallows and swifts, or swifts and swallow of Nigeria. Um, well, I don't, there's not really a good way of, yeah, it's, it's difficult to distinguish these two kinds of birds because they, they live the same life. So it's like they've been adapted to the same, um, way of, of living. So therefore they look similar. Uh, and that's, but you need to be out to understand what the difference are. But the swifts are a little bit uh, narrow wings and longer wings. And but otherwise it's a bit harder. I will talk more about the different kinds, but you will see and I will point out when we see the different birds here. So just a, first a short <clears throat> overview. We have about 900 bird species in Nigeria, a little bit more, 920 or something. 15 of these are swifts, and they are an order in within what we generally call non-passeriformes, which is now plus 40 different orders. And they are all in the same family, Apodine. The swallows and martins in Nigeria, they are about 22 species. And they are in the order of Passeriformes famil family, Hirundinide. So there is one big order, which is almost half the birds called Passeriformes. And then there are 40 plus different orders containing all the other birds in different orders. Swifts is one order, parrots, one order. Bushfowl, one order, etc., etc. Ducks, one order. The swifts in Nigeria are in this, are like the Sabin spine tail, black spine tail, motel spine tail. Cassin spine tail, African palm swift, African black swift, pallet swift, plain swift, common swift, bait swift, white drum swift, horror swift, little swift, motor swift, alpine swift. Most of them you don't see every day. Maybe the most common one is lift, little swift that you see most often. But if you are in the forest, you will see one of the spine tails more often. Or if you are in the cities in the south or in south, you will see mottled spine tail quite often. Two birds here, African black swift and plain swift, only have one record each in Nigeria. So they are very rare, but you can look after them. Some of them are migrants. We have common swift, we have pallid swift, not motor swift, alpine swift is the three 
uh, migrants to Nigeria from Europe. When it's come to the swallows in Nigeria, they are 22 according to this list. I don't go through all now, but uh, some of them are migrants also. And the migrants from Europe are common sand martin, red rumped swallow, barn swallow, and house martin. Red rumped swallow, <clears throat> you may say, oh, you always see it in Africa. Yeah. But now, quite recently, they have been splitted. So the one we see all the time around in Nigeria is West African swallow that before was called, was part, was a, a, a subspecies of red ramp swallow, but is now its own species called West African swallow. But well, we have two different subspecies of that, Domicella domicella and Domicella congruensis. And congruensis you see in the highlands of Mambilla and uh, Obudu. Among the swifts, the one we have around my house here is common swift that breeds all over Europe and it migrants, migrates down to Africa. And I want to show you some uh, migration patterns of this bird, this species and other. And just very recently, this very nice tool the Eurasian African Bird Migration Atlas come online that you can find uh, all ringing recoveries and also a lot of data from MoveBank. And MoveBank contains data from uh, radar tracking, no, uh, satellite tracking and uh, logger tracking and GPS loggers and other, other types of tracking birds. So here we can see how swifts from different parts of Europe migrate down to Africa. So up here we have Sweden and they go down to Africa. The British birds go down to East Africa and around the Congo. And, and but these are ringing recoveries and they mainly ringing recoveries and they don't show everything. So if you look into a, a track bird where they have some sort of tracking device on it, you see that this, that the straight lines between ringing and recovery is actually a loop where they follow a route down to the winter quarters above the forest in Central Africa. And then on the way back north, a lot of these birds go to Liberia over the, the Gulf, of, Gulf of Guinea and spend a few weeks in April over the, the forest in Liberia before they travel north. And all different populations of common swifts traveling from different parts of Europe, spending a little bit different the winter or non breeding season in different, little bit different places in Africa. Before they go back north in April, they all gather on the, out, above a forest in Liberia. They're very strange and we don't know really why, but something is emerging there that give them a lot of food and they stay there and gather fat and things to be able to continue north. <clears throat> we have three swifts with white rump in Nigeria. The little swift, the horror swift, and the white rump swift. The little swift has a broad white rump and a square tail. But as you know, sometimes 
these fork tail birds, they keep the tail together. So they hard to say. So Hora Swift is a little bit bigger than a little Swift. It had a white rump, broad white rump, but a fork tail and also a white beep under the bill. And the white goes down on receiving these flying birds. The white goes down towards the belly below the wing. If you compare with a white rump swift, it has a quite narrow white rump. And the tail is more slender than the horror swift. And the white don't go down below the wing towards the belly. The white drum swift is also the most delicate of this free swift. It has very long, narrow wings and a special way of flying. So I used to say at the plori, if you have a, that is normally just little swift there. But if you see many little swift, if there are like 100 little swift flying around, and you spend some extra few minutes to watch the little swift, you will find a white drum swift among. Horus swift, you have to go uh, further north in Nigeria to find, normally at least. So this is the three birds that you can see in northern Nigeria, a little swift and white drum swift more in southern Nigeria. Then there's a third one, fourth one, and that is a bait swift. <coughs> and it's totally black swift. Most like a white drum swift, but without any white on it. And you might think that it would be easy to distinguish it from white drum, but sometimes if you have white drum swift above you, and the white is very narrow. You have to spend some time before you actually see the white. So it can be easily, you think you see baits, but it's actually a white rump, but you don't see the white. The few times I've seen baits, I have, have to have looked for them for quite a long time to be sure that there's actually no white. It have happened like three, four, five times at the plori. Otherwise, bait swift is a little bit more south in Nigeria and over the forest, <clears throat> but it's very rarely seen. Then we have swallows and martins. Swallows are most often the birds with long forked tail whereas martins have shorter tails and with not, no tail streamers. So that is to distinguish them from uh, between swallows and martins. And you can see here, compared to the swifts, swallows and martins have broader wings and not, not that scythe-like, knife-like uh, that the swifts had. You see here the, the swift has a very narrow, long pointed wing with a narrow base to the body. We have swallows, often have more colors and are, has a much broader wing base. So the wing will become more triangular, whereas uh, on the swift it's narrow already from the start. Among the swallows and martins in Nigeria, I showed you the four migrants, barn swallow, house martin, sand martin, and red rump swallow. And most of them have very huge distributions. Barn swallow all over Eurasia, from Atlantic to the uh, Pacific, Pacific Sea, and you also have barn swallows in America. Same with sand martins. You have sand martins all the way of Eurasia, also in uh, Americas. House martin is all over Eurasia, 
And but now the Asian, there's an Asian subspecies called Asia, Asian house martin. So the house martin that goes down to Africa, it is the European or common house martin breeds in the Western parts of this uh, distribution part here from like this, if you can see my arrow here. And then we had a red rump swallow who breeds mainly in Southern Europe and around Middle East. And then that is a good that migrants to Africa. Then you have other subspecies more easterly. Sometimes they also uh, split it into new species. And this red rump swallow, even if it's a species that breeds in Southern Europe, you see it regularly up to Sweden, but it don't breed in Sweden. The migration of barn swallow have been heavily uh, studied because they are quite easy to trap uh, when they on migration when they roost in uh, reed beds and other high grasses. And you can see that there are some patterns here from the British swallows here. They fly all the way down to Southern Africa. Same for Scandinavian swallows. They also go down quite easterly in Africa and all the way down to uh, Southern Africa, where Central European swallows go more to West Africa and not that far like the others. There's one place in Nigeria that is famous uh, for their barn swallows, and that is down here in Cross River State in Ebaken, close to Afi Mountain. And there is a hill with elephant grass where people have been trapping swallows for more than 20 years. And the reason is that during the non-breeding season, swallows from very far around this area come here every night to roost. And in the middle of the winter for us, or middle of a non-breeding season, the number of birds coming to this hill have been estimated to three, four millions every night. So when you are there in the evening, the, 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 the sky is full of them. So they start to arrive around one hour before sunset, and then they whirl around and then eventually settle in one part of this uh, elephant grass hill. They don't, they're not spread out over on all the area. They go down to some certain places. And if you put nets there to put rings, to trap them and put rings on them and take measurements, you can trap 1,000 birds in only one, two net in a night. The house martin, it's also migrated down to many places in Africa, but these birds haven't been studied as much as the barn swallow. So there is much less known about its migration patterns. Same or similar for sand martin, apart from Britain, where there have been some projects where they have ringed a lot of barn swallows. They, they dig out the nest holes in sandbanks, so they and breeding colonies, so they can you can go to a colony and trap many birds. And there was also uh, been a lot of trapping down in northern Senegal, so giving a lot of tree traps from England and also recoveries from birds ringed in Senegal into Britain. So this guys in England who ringed a lot of uh, sand martins in UK, they went to Senegal and they re-trapped 120 of their own birds in these plates in, in Juge, in Northern Senegal. And for red ram swallow, 
I don't have any details of their, they're quite rare and not so studied. When the barn swallow comes to Africa, it mixes with the two resident swallow, the Ethiopian swallow and the wire-tail swallow. And the barn swallow you see here to the, up to the left is an adult bird in breeding plumage. During winter or what, the non-breeding season, they are not this colorful. I don't have a red, the tail streamers are not that long. So they really resemble the Ethiopian swallow quite a lot. And here down to the left, you have a juvenile. You can see a little bit how about this is how the adults also look in winter. So how shall you be able to distinguish a barn swallow from Ethiopian swallow? The barn swallow always have a full ring around the neck. You see that it's blue hair on the adult bird, it's black hair on the juvenile bird, but it's always a full color around the neck. Whereas on the Ethiopian swallow, when you see on these pictures here, the collar is not full, so it's, it's open in the middle. So it's only have start like a collar, but then it's not full. And it's just small black streaks coming in, not making a full collar. And the, if you see it also, the Ethiopian swallow has more white than black in the tail, whereas the barn swallow has more black than white in the tail. So these two things together, if you see them relatively well, you, you can make them distinguish from between barn swallow and Ethiopian swallow. Sometimes it's complicated to distinguish between wire tail and Ethiopian swallow. Because they fly fast, so you don't really see how the head look like. I mean, Ethiopian swallow has just a red forehead, whereas wiretail has a full red head. It seems like it should be easy to see, but it's not the same for the Ethiopian and, and wiretail swallow. They're not always in breeding plumage, which also have a juvenile birds. So it can be a bit tricky. But the head is the best. And then you think that the tail, tail streamers, the wire tailed tail streamers in the wire tail swallow should be easy. But as you see in the lower picture here, these tail streamers are so delicate, so they're often uh, broken. And therefore, it's a bad tool. If you don't see the head well or you see them fly by, <coughs> And if you, a white-tailed swallow is shining blue, really, really shining blue, the whole bird, much more shining than Ethiopian swallow, but it just has some shiny parts on the wings, and then our more like dull blue. So if you see a blue shining swallow with pale under parts, you will know that it's a white-tailed swallow. Then there's four swallows with red rumps. We talked about the red rump swallow before, that is a migrant. And now have been split into two species, red rump swallow, which is a migrant, and the West African swallow, that is a resident swallow. But you have, for example, around uh, Amurum all the time, and Jos. But it also do some movements with the rain, seasonal movements with the rain. So how to distinguish between two, these two species? I will come back to that in a while. I think I'll do it now. So one thing that distinguish red rump swallow and West African swallow from the other two swallows here, the mosque swallow is and lesser striped swallow is that the tail and under tail coverts on red round swallow and West African swallow are black 
it's like you have dipped the bird in ink and they, or it looks like it has tides on it. Whereas that you see here on the mosque swallow, the under tail covers are rusty and on the lesser stripe swallow is white. So if you see these black trousers, you know it's either West African swallow or red rump swallow. And to distinguish between these two species, you can look at the rump, but in a red rump swallow, the migrant is too colored, a little bit paler towards the tail and a little bit darker towards the back. Whereas on the West African swallow, it's one color, there's no difference between, it. there's no pattern or, or it's just one color of the upper tail colors. To distinguish mosque swallow from the others, I just mentioned the tail. The mosque swallow is the biggest swallow of all in Africa. And it flies very lot of gliding, flying slowly. And it has this prominent white or pale under wing covers, contrasting to the dark flight feathers. So this is a very good way to distinguish uh, musk swallow from the other swallows. And then you have lesser striped swallow, that is a very delicate little swallow with a totally red head. So I also had a red rump, but you see these striked, streaked breast, which distinguishes from the other, the other uh, swallows here. <coughs> so what you should look for is how the tail look like, how the rump look like, how the upper tail, under tail covers look like, and the flight feathers, and if it's striped to have a full red head. Among the martins, we have the house martin here to the right. That uh, this is pictures from one drawing and one picture during uh, breeding season when they are really blue and white. But when they are in Africa, they are quite dull white and the blue is not as blue as it is during breeding season. So they are actually quite similar to Prusy's cliff swallow, which you don't really see if you haven't seen it, so to say. Because I was sitting in, in yours at Aplori many days and have, have had problems to distinguish, to see if it's Prusy's or House Martins. And sometimes we have both there. So if you don't have really good light and you, are patient, you won't really see uh, any difference until you have looked for a while. But what you shall look for is that the Prusis have some white in the tail, which the house martin don't have. And it is generally, the Prusis is generally more dull and, and look like a bit dirty. And the Prus is under, like the mosque swallow, he has pale under wing covers, contrasting to dark flight feathers, where under wing of a more of a house martin, martin is more generally palish, and there's no real contrast, as you can see here in the Prusis. So you can see, think that if you see these birds here, you could see, think it's easy to distinguish them, but it's not always the case. <clears throat> and I have seen a lot of reports of house martins now in June in southern Nigeria. And I think actually it can be Prusis. So when you do atlasing, you need to be careful about this because house martins, most house martins should be in Europe by now breeding. So here is a, what I want to point out, the contrast between the under wing covers and the darker wing feathers, flight feathers. 
Then we have another group of grayish martins that can be a bit tricky. We have a migrant sand martin, and we have a, what was called before uh, African sand martin, now often plain martin, which is quite easy because it's small, really small martin, and it has this dark head with dark upper breast and throat. So if you see it, there's no contrast in this plain martin. But both San Martin and Banded Martin have this breast band and some contrast in the head. The San Martin have this collar that you see that the Banded Martin don't have. And then if you see them sitting like this, you see the Banded Martin is, has his white eyebrow before the eye, between the eye and the bill. And it's also more clear brown and clear white, whereas a sand martin is dull white and dull brown. So a banded martin is uh, more contrasting. We also have this contrast under wing with pale under wing coverts with dark flight feathers, whereas a sand martin has dark under wing coverts and no contrast towards the flight feathers. In northern Nigeria, like in Jos, the banded martin is a seasonal rains migrant. So you see it around this period, starting from end of May and during the rains. It's a big bird flying low over the ground, a lot of gliding. So have you seen a banded martin once? You will remember it and you can distinguish it on the way you're flying. It's not as flattering flight as the two other, San Martins and Plain Martin, a smaller bird, so a much more flattering flight and than the banded martin, was more gliding around a lot. So one good detail, if you are don't sure, first time you see it, it's the pale under wing covers of banded martin contrasting to the black or darker uh, flight feathers. Another group is the saw wings, which are black swallows. In the forest, you have square tailed saw wing, which is easy to distinguish. Totally dark black saw wing, a swallow with a square tail. In Jos and in Northern Nigeria, we have Tanti Sowing as a rains migrant visitor arriving from April down and flying, going away again, September, October. In, on the plateaus, in Mabila Plateau and Obudu Plateau, you have mountain sowing and black sowing which are quite hard to distinguish from each other. But when you are there, you will learn it. And otherwise, you, if you go to these places, you have to ask Kevin or Elisha, and they, they will teach you how to distinguish these two birds. And then, at last, I will show you a picture of white-throated blue swallow, which is in my thinking is the most beautiful swallow we have in Nigeria. You have it low over water in the forest region, always by the rivers. We used to step, stop at the, uh, the bridge over uh, Cross River, just south of Icon. And if you walked over the bridge, bridge there, you will always see um, you see this bird, the white-throated blue swallow. So with this, I will um, say uh, thank you or tack in Swedish. 
now time for uh, questions. I've got one question here on um, from Dyson. Uh, if uh, airbacking is an uh, important bird area. Uh, I don't know, but people don't care about it because they used to trap swallows on mass. Uh, when we are there working, they, they used to avoid it. That's one big reason we have been to airbacking over all these years, um, to, to trap birds and give people alternative incomes. They, the estimate of trapped birds there are in the hundreds of thousands otherwise. And they just stick up uh, sticks or hooks in the area to get the swallows. Because the air, the air is thick of them, so it's so easy to trap. Okay. So I leave the floor open for questions. Yeah, thank you, Pro. So um, for all that have joined the call, thank you again for joining us. So please now it's time for question. If you have any, you can write it in the chat or you can just raise your hand and ask the prof directly. Thank you. Usman, you have, do you have a question or you're just clapping your hands? Maybe it was just clapping. <laughs> Obviously. Stop sharing. Oh, we were 23 now. That's beautiful. Any questions? There's one more. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Yes, please. Come on. Yes, come on. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Good evening from Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, Prof, thank you very much for having me on this program and having me too. My question is uh, the swift uh, swallow. Here we have you, you mentioned one of uh, the mock swallow and the uh, West African. I think swallow. Yeah. So can you still make the difference? Can you still explain more on the <clears> difference <throat> between the mock swallow and the West African swallow? Yeah. yeah the, the main difference is that the tail of the West African is totally black up to the under the tail coverts. And then the, so it has a black, totally black tail, which the uh, mosque don't have. Then the mosque has these pale under wing covers, contrasting to, to uh, dark flight feathers. And a mosque swallow is a very big swallow with, with almost a bit rounded wings and not as pointed as other swallows. And they also fly often like soaring, gliding quite slowly. So if you have seen one, if you have seen a mosque swallow once, you will remember the way it flies. And that will, and you look into how a, a West African swallow flies, you will see it also in that pattern. So look at the tail and the under wing coverts. You will see the plumage difference and then in the behavior, how they fly. So I mean, a, a mosque swallow is probably like 10, 15, percent bigger than than uh, uh, West Africa swallows so, and very rounded wings and it's typically like notched off close to the armpit or wing pit so the, there the, there's like a yeah like you have taken out a bit there so it doesn't go straight into the body it goes in like there's a bit of a notch there Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any more questions for the prof? Okay. So if not, I, I will say that this is a very interesting 
webinar, as I promised us from the beginning, because you see, it's always tricky to like try to, to tell apart the, the swallows from the sweeps and even within all the saw wings and the martins. But then hopefully today we will like have an idea on how to separate between these species. You know, one thing is either you actually just look at the whole um, morphology of the birds, that's the wing patterns or the way the tail is being shaped. Or another thing is for you to look at the different habitats where they are found. You can see a bird, the one that's supposed to be up in the north, and then you, 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 you say it's what you are seeing in the southern part of Nigeria, it's not possible. So sometimes their habitat too plays a very important role. And then also the, let me say, not, yeah, the distribution actually with the habitat, they are the structure of the body, you know, all these things play a very important part when we're trying to look at the, the swallows. So I hope that we've gotten something and then we'll build on all this that we've learned from today. Actually, we will we'll like share the recording so that for anything that you've missed out, you can go back and watch it all over again. And for all that have joined us, thank you again, Prof. Thank you so much for your time. And if there are no other questions, Dr. T, evening, ma'am. Good evening. Yeah, so nice to have you on the call. If you can just say hi to our audience before we wrap up the meeting for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Professor Otusen, for this um, excellent presentation. It's always a moment of learning each time Professor Uv has to give um, a presentation, a webinar. I look forward to it. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, I was a little bit um, busy in the field and I just joined in late. I apologize for that, but the presentation was excellent. And thank you very much for making out time out of your busy schedule to give us such an explanatory uh, presentation. And I believe everyone is going to have the slide in maybe PDF format so that people can have it apart from the recording. I think we'll have proof if you can <laughs> see the format so that um, people can have it with them. It will be very, very great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nanjin, for coordinating. And thank you, everyone, for joining. And I'm sure the next presentation given by Prof would be equally excellent, especially on difficult to ID species. We hold on Prof to maybe ne the next presentation will be on warblers, yeah, difficult okay. to ID or, or raptors maybe. But from uh, yeah, from from the Prof, you have a way of of dissecting everything and make it very easy for people to understand. Thank it, you very it, much for that. I, I hope you mean the next June webinar, right? <laughs> we talk about that off camera. But thank okay. you very much, Nanjin, well done. Thank you everyone for making the time to join this webinar. Yes, you, thank and you, you can so always, much, Ma. You can um, always come to uh, me, you know, send me questions anytime. Okay, but Prof, there's a yeah. quick question from um, Nanji. And he's asking if, um, so think which are more common in terms of encounter in Nigeria between the sweeps and swallows? Yeah. Is, is, isn't he almost a doctor? He should be able to answer that himself. Um, I don't know. I mean, the most common swifts and the most common swifts in Nigeria is little swifts. The most common, Swallow, Martin is barn swallow and Ethiopian swallow. Uh, I would not. I would say, I mean, seasonally, barn swallow is extremely common everywhere in Nigeria. But I mean, then it moves away. And as you know, you see little swifts and Ethiopian swallow. You see almost everywhere. So, yeah. Okay, and, and, and so that's one thing I think that I left out. When you're actually looking out for the sweep and swallows, you also consider that, that some of them are migratory. So it's not all the time. Like it's amazing now to see that 
um, the West African swallows and the red rum swallows. You know, that the red rum swallows now are migratory. We don't see them all the time. But then the West African, the West African swallows are here with us residents. So maybe some of these tips we keep close when we are out there in the field. And yeah. sure, the suggestion from Dr. T is actually taking more momentum and people are like voting for the raptors. So next time, Prof, the raptors might be one of yeah. the things I would look out for. So on this note, if there are no more questions or any additions, we want to say hello. thank you very much on behalf of NIBA. Is somebody saying hello? Tunji? Yes. Uh, this is, yes. Okay. Yeah, I want to ask a question concerning the uh, zip bounce. I've been seeing some, uh, I don't know whether it's solid or bounce around my area, very black, but they are very fast, but I don't know which of the one. Is it bounce or a swallow? So where are you? Uh, Abuja, I mean Abuja, but I stay around the um, Jikoi area. That's where I do my bedding. Yeah. Well, we'll have a blade. We'll have the most common black that yeah, yeah. should be should be little swifts, uh, probably. I mean, they, you know, they go to a, they used to breed under bridge and they use all swallow nests under bridge. So I can be like a big colonies under bridges. So I, they are very oh. quick. And so if you look at them proper next time, you will see that it's a white rump and it's probably little swift for that area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much again. And a, a quick reminder, please. This webinar is monthly. And so for next month, we'll keep you updated on the topic and the presenter. So if you will kindly stay tuned and watch out um, and watch our Facebook um, group, you will be updated um, as the time as we reveal the next topic and the next presenter. So once again, thank you so much on behalf of NIBA for joining the webinar and looking forward to see us soon on the next call. Have a blessed and relaxed evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good night. Have yeah. a nice time. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now you're talking. <laughs> Have a nice day.